All right, Chimdi, what are we gonna do for this video? <sighs> no one's probably even gonna watch this video, man. That's not true. At least 34 people will watch it. Maybe not 34 individual people, but it will at least get 34 views. And that's something. And also, listen, you're building a library of content, okay? A library of content. So I want this to be an advertisement for my coaching. And I know they said a way to do ads is just to basically give free advice. And all coaching is pretty much just like combating fear. I can talk about these books I've been reading and I can talk about how each one has given me a different strategy for combating fear. Yes, love this. I love this idea. I think this is great. But haven't you already talked about that? Because you talked about that in your podcast. Well, first off, this is actually great cross promotion for the podcast. Okay. And not everyone who watches your videos has listened to the podcast and vice versa. And it's still valuable information. So you should still do it. Yeah, I agree. And then what I can do is that in the making of the video, I can demonstrate the techniques and how I use them to combat my fear and still get stuff done. Yes, I think that's good. That's not too meta, is it? No, I think it's like the perfect amount of meta. Hey y'all, it's Jim D. So I recently started a creative coaching business where I'm helping creative types launch or relaunch their passion projects. And one thing that's come up again and again is fear. Everyone is just very, very scared that they will work on this project, put it out, and it will not be received well and they will otherwise fail. And I know what that's like. I'm a creative type. I've got this YouTube channel. I've been making videos for four years. I've been a writer. I have been a photographer. I have done hair on the side. There's nothing I love to do more than do creative things in my free time and hopefully very soon in my full time and I want to share the things that have worked for me. Some of the tactics I've been using from the very beginning and some of them are more new and many of them tie to three books that I'm actually reading right now so this will also count as three book recommendations for you all to consider as well. So that's going to be the content of this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with the newest tactic which I only recently started doing and it has genuinely changed my life. This one is from Fear by Thich Nhat Hanh. In the book he talks about how all of our fears come back to this primal sense of when we were born and we came out of our mother's womb and we were like, like what the F is this? I didn't ask for this. And so now we are out here in this world and we have no power, we have no resources. All we have is, you know, convincing our parents, our caretakers, our loved ones to take care of us because we can't do it ourselves. And so as we get older, we never lose that original fear is his argument. We still have this sense that something could happen and then we won't be able to take care of ourselves essentially. And so he has got a tactic which I recently used and fully love. And essentially what you do is when you have this fear come up, you have something that you're really worried about, it'll be simple things too. So for instance, the last time I remember using this and it really worked was when I was working on a check-in agenda and I hadn't finished it yet and I was very nervous about it. I just had this feeling and it's truly just the agenda for a call that is a standing call we have every week. And I was like, okay, it's time to use this tactic. So I just imagined myself as a small child and I just said what was on my spirit, which was like, I'm just worried that if I don't finish this check-in agenda, then my manager will think that I'm incompetent and they'll be like, why are we even paying her? And then they'll fire me and then I live in LA so I'll just be on the street like all the other homeless people on the street here and then I'll just die and that'll be it and I'll just be ruined. And so then what Tish Nhat Hanh says is that after you do this version where you imagine yourself as a small child, you do what you would do as an adult which is you just counsel them from a place of loving compassion and you say, hey Chimdi, I know you're worried about the check-in document, but first off, that's not quite even how that works. Like no one's gonna fire you because you just didn't finish this single document on time. And then even if you did, you know you have savings so you wouldn't immediately be on the street. And you have friends and you also have family. So a lot would have to happen for you to go from not you know, successfully completing this document to you being sleeping in a tent on the streets of Los Angeles. And beyond that, like, you're not a child anymore. You're an adult. Like, you have resources. You are strong. You are smart. You can get another job. You can be okay. You don't really need to be worried about this. So I did this practice, and then I imagined myself, like, bringing small three, four-year-old chimney into my arms and, like, holding her. And it was very restorative, and it was very nice, and I've been doing it ever since. And honestly, that fear has mostly gone away because of the other tactics as well, but definitely because of that experience of whenever I have a fear come up, I 
I don't imagine it's me, grown me, thinking the fear. I imagine it's small chimney thinking the fear. And I actually took it like another step deeper, which is that when the fear is even more primal, I imagine it's straight up newborn baby chimney having that fear. And I imagine this newborn chimney, I imagine myself taking newborn chimney and giving her to three, four year old chimney. Cause you know when babies take care of other babies and it's the cutest thing. And so I imagine being like, all right chimney, can you take care of baby chimney? Cause as you see, she's scared, she's stressed out. She doesn't even know what's wrong, but she's just, you know, she's just alive and sometimes it's a lot for her. So can you just like take care of her? And then three, four year old chimney is like, okay, I'll take care of her. And I'm like, thanks tiny version of me. All of the books that I'm gonna share, well two of them actually, I just borrowed from the library. You can actually get a library account and then download books directly to your Kindle. So I've only actually paid for one of these books. Well now two, because I love this so much that I was like, I want a physical copy. But essentially you can get all this knowledge for free, y'all. All of it, it's for free. The second tip comes from this book by Dr. Joe Dispenza and it is called Becoming Supernatural. This book has been a game changer in my life in general. I could do like a five part series on what I've learned from this book and the way it has changed my life completely. But but the main thing that I have taken from this book in terms of how I use it to combat fear is actually how I talk to myself and how I combat my negative self-talk. What the book explained that genuinely blew my mind is that the bodies we are living in are bodies of the past. They are bodies that are of our past experiences. We get turned into, you know, these chemical pathways and neurons, et cetera, et cetera. And so we think and do things because it's how we think, thunk, think, thunk because it's how we've thought about them in the past. And in reality, we are just in the now. We are just in the present. Anything could happen in the future as well. We think things are gonna happen in the future because it's happened in the past. So like, oh, well, last time I talked to this person, it didn't go well. So the next time I talk to them, it also won't go well. There's no guarantee of that. That's in the future. But you're actually manifesting your future by dwelling on your past. And so the way I use his book is actually by focusing on the reality of things and putting all of my energy towards that. Because the book is a lot about how what you put your energy towards is what so for instance, I have a YouTube channel, I've had it for four years, and I have about 4,000 subscribers. Those are just facts, right? There's no value judgment. These are, it's not good or bad, that's just the truth. Now depending on how I look at it, I can either make that be something that makes me sad and upset and disappointed and scared, or it makes me happy and elated and joyful, even though the exact same facts are the same. I could say if I wanted to be negative, oh you only have 4,000 subscribers after doing it for four entire years. There's so many people who have been on YouTube for such shorter amount of times and gotten so many more subscribers and you should feel bad about the fact that you haven't been more successful when you think you're so great. Now that is real negative, all right? And I don't appreciate that kind of self-talk. So instead, I choose to reframe it completely differently. And I say, girl, you have been doing YouTube for four years. There are so many people who start YouTube and they quit right away because they don't have what it takes to keep going. But you are not like them. You have what it takes to keep going. And you have 4,000 subscribers. More than that, if we're being honest, these are people who have taken, they've made the decision to follow along with what you want to do every week. Like, isn't that wild that just literally who you are, being yourself, making your content, 4,000 plus people were like, yes, I am interested. And girl, your YouTube is monetized. So you out here getting paid money literally just for being yourself and creating art that you would create anyway. You are so blessed. And all of that is also true. It's just about where you decide to put your energy and your attention. And the more you put your energy and your attention towards the things that are amazing and true and beautiful and fill you with energy and excitement, the more you're gonna then think about everything in that way and then create more opportunities and more experiences for yourself that reinforce that way of thinking. And one thing that I really love about this approach, I talked about it in the podcast that I was on with Lolo and my friend Kamali. It's called Shaking the Table. Our episode is called I Can Too Bad all by myself. It is about relationships and all that. You know, we were talking about how we combat negative self-talk and that shadow self, that ego voice that wants to keep us back and wants to hold us from being our greatest self. And one thing I really emphasized in that conversation was about approaching that version of yourself with compassion. That version of yourself is a version of you. It's just a version of you that's scared. And the same way you wouldn't yell at a baby for crying because they're scared of being alive is <laughs> the same way you wouldn't yell at yourself or you shouldn't yell at yourself when you are making a mistake when you are scared of something and when you will feel overwhelmed. Instead, you want to greet that person who is you with love and compassion and understanding and grace and remind that person who is you that 
you got this, you're gonna be okay, you deserve love, you are gonna be all right. Yeah, big fan of that approach from Joe. And then the third book and the most powerful one of all, I'm still reading it and I love it so much. And I was actually, I saw someone do a YouTube summary of the book and from the YouTube summary, I was like, I need this physical book because just this YouTube summary is blowing my mind. So as you can imagine, the entire book is about the power of now, the power of being present, how everything that matters, it's happening right here in the present moment, that the past, the future, these things, Things, no, they don't really exist. It's just about now and this infinite now. And so I really love the book. Super duper, really like, it speaks directly to my heart, this book. And one thing that I really appreciate about it is that it gives you a very concrete and tactical way <laughs> of approaching any situation you're in, which is to just ask yourself, do I have a problem right now? In this exact moment, not like, oh no, if this happens, then two months from now and blah, blah, blah. Or man, remember four years ago when this bad thing happened? None of that. Right now, in this moment, do you have a problem? If the answer is no, then all right, <laughs> then we're good. <laughs> so you, you stay in this moment and then if the problem arises, then you deal with it. And the second part of that is reframing the concept of problems to situations. So that blew my mind. He was like, there are no problems, just situations. I was like, wait a minute, how does that work? Cause it felt true, but I was like, huh? Wait a minute, explain it to me. And essentially, when you find yourself in a situation, you either accept it or you resist it. And it's when you are resisting the situation you're in that you have problems. Like that's really what it is, is you are resisting some reality, some truth in your life. And so if you are confronted with the truth and reality in your life, you've got a few options. One, you can embrace it, and then it no longer is a problem because you've embraced it. And embracing something full on, giving it your full focus and your full attention, you can't both do that and also resist it and also hate it. So that kind of blew my mind already. The other thing you can do, obviously, is change it. So you can change the situation you're in so that it's more suited to what you want to do. And then the third one, of course, is to leave it. So whatever is going on, you'd be like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this no more and I do not have to. And so you leave that situation. That honestly has been such a game changer for me, that approach. It has just brought me back so many times. So before I make any video, y'all, I genuinely have the thought process of, okay, well, no one's gonna watch it. I have all this negative self talk about it. And so I go through that process. And then I realize that all these thoughts and comments are me putting myself in the future. They're me being like, in the future, I may or may not experience this or that. And the reality is I do not live in the future. I live in the now. And as he says, everything that happens, all the work you're doing towards your goals, the work still happens right now. And then I just have to decide, okay, what can we do right now to bring ourselves to this more perfect future? And that allows me to just like push away all the doubts, all the concerns and be like, okay, right Right now, I can set up my camera, I can script out what I'm gonna say, I can put on my eyeliner, I can put on my nice little sweater. <laughs> Truly, y'all only gonna see like 10 outfits on this YouTube channel. But I'm gonna put on my sweater and I'm gonna talk to the camera and then afterwards I'm gonna edit the video and I'm gonna upload it and that is what I can do right now. And that has been such a game changer, y'all. Like, I've gotten so much stuff done. If you look at the history of my channel, y'all saw that I used to literally upload once a week when I first started, then I went traveling and then it would be months at a time before I would upload again. And even when I got back, to the states i would do one video three or four weeks another video so to go from that which has been the majority of my time on youtube easily the first three years to uploading twice a week consistently has been a major shift for me a major area of growth and i really attribute it to these different resources that have helped me get out of my own way <laughs> like literally stop blocking my own blessings and it's not that hard you know like it takes effort and work and intentionality and you have to be consistent on it but it's not actually hard and it's been been really really rewarding talking to other people who are in this creative space and coaching them into like using these exact same methods and reminding them and encouraging them of what's actually really possible if they really want to make this new life for themselves and I would say like the final thing that all these different books also touch on is about how to have the life you want you have to realize that you actually already have the life you want and that's where like focusing on the good things being very present looking at your situations as things that you can affect and change versus problems that have happened to you. All these things allow you to live a life that you love and that's very beautiful. So when I think about the life that I want, that has to do with creating content, coaching people, getting to travel, spending time learning new things, connecting with people. There are multiple examples of my life right now where that's actually what's happening. Like I literally am coaching people right now. I literally am making art right now. I'm literally getting a chance to connect with cool people and coach people 
and learn new things and travel. That's all happening in this very moment. And so remembering that actually I have the life I want right now and I'm actually overwhelmingly blessed and grateful in this very moment has allowed me to stay in the space where I keep drawing and attracting things that reinforce this mindset and repelling the things that don't. I'm just blessed. Like I feel so blessed and so excited when I get to make YouTube videos and I get to talk to you all that like people listen, people comment. It's amazing. It's so cool. And I just really hope if you're someone who deals with anxiety, who deals with fear, some of these different tactics you can try and use. And I was actually just talking to a friend of mine who was, you know, dealing with this work situation and she definitely didn't understand how great she was. And it was, you know, as a friend, you're like, you are great. You're trying to encourage them. And the advice I gave to her, which I would also give to you as a little bit of homework, is to literally write down 10 ways that your life right now is fantastic. 10 ways where you right now are great and are actually killing it. And then revisit that list every day and remind yourself of what is true. The other negative stuff, that's also true. But do you want to focus on the negative stuff and bring more of that? Or do you want to focus on the positive and bring more of that? That's been a game changer for me. I hope that's a helpful tip for you all. If you are a creative person who wants some extra support, wants some coaching to grow your own creative passion project or business, reach out to me. I would love to support you. It brings me no greater joy than helping other people create amazing art. And you know, straight up bless me with it. Like y'all are blessing me. I'm trying to bless you by blessing to me. All right. All right. That's the video, y'all. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!